let's move on to the JS file. To make sure that nothing invokes until DOM tree is fully loaded, uh, I will put all the code in onload event of Windows object. Widget shall allow the user to put any <coughs> RSS feed of his choice. It will be stored in the phone manual. In case the application is being run for the first time, I will define a default URL address, which is one of the Samsung's news. Now I will make the references to all useful DOM elements in our application. I do it once at the beginning and create a list of variables in the global scope. I will need also some basics and useful functions, like for example those for hiding and showing elements. For scrolling the content on our device, uh, we will have to implement some workaround solution as the SHP platform. The SHP stands for Samsung Handset Platform. It doesn't support the default scroll bars. The method being shown at the moment is used for resizing the widget. It is platform independent and it will work on any platform with Touch PC UI support. The useful and universal function will be also the URL checker where the regular expression syntax for URL address validation is being used. For saving items, let's define the simple article structure where we will store title, link and description of each type. Now I'm going to create a core method for the widget. The application will start from here. First of all, I have to check if any feed address is stored in memory. If not, I'm going to hide the uh, everything except for the input form and fill input text box with default value, define a few steps before. At this point we can check how our widget looks in the emulator. First we need to save our work and then launch the emulator. As you can see we have one layer launch and this is input form. Ok, let's continue. If there is anything uh, stored uh, here, I can just call the main method responsible for fetching the feed. Event for clicking the submit button not only looks but also is very simple. All I have to do here is to store inserted address and call get RSS channel method. Now let's look at the actions that show MSG method. This method is used for showing information in the message box. At first we have to set the appropriate size, then hide everything else except for the message box and close button. Finally we can display the message in paragraph tag. Closing message box event goal is to abort any Ajax action and show input box. To do that we have to read from memory URL feed address and change the size of the window. Now let's build core functions starting from get RSS channel. At the beginning let's show loading status, then check stored URL. If something goes wrong here we abort application and show appropriate message. In that case user can switch to input box and amend the URL. Let's simulate the network problem in our application. I'm clicking submit button and as we can see the appropriate message is displayed. OK, let's fix it and continue. Now we're showing the loading status and get URL address from the phone memory. Again, if something goes wrong, here we should uh, show the appropriate message and abort the application. To avoid the caching problems, we will show no cache head headers and in the last part, we will make the request and define callback function. Now let's focus on prepare XML method. First, let's find out the name of the channel by getting the title tag and its text value. Next, let's make the reference to item list, which is an array of the items. Now let's iterate on that list and fill in array of article objects. Information that we need to separate is only a title, link and a description. In description tags we have to remove all image tags and we do that by a regular expression. 
the last thing is to create an object for each item. After that we can call show list, which is the list of objects as an argument. This method is responsible for displaying items on the list screen. First thing we have to do is to hide and show appropriate views. Set size assign scroll events where argument for this function is diff which would be scrolled. Well, maybe it's a good idea to see how the widget looks like uh, at the moment. Okay. We see input box, loading view, and item list screen, which is right now empty. Okay. Let's go back to coding a bot. After that we can iterate on object lists and create some HTML tags by JavaScript. Afterwards we fill them by already stored object values. We need to, to assign events to links on that list as well. In particular event we have to store all logic for displaying description view. The code consists of showing and hiding elements, filling out content elements and changing all events on pagination buttons. As you can see we've set different diff ID elements. After that we can append the list element at the end. The last two methods are for home button where we just show input box view and reload button which is simple call to get RSS channel method. That is all with coding part. Now we are ready to check our work. We can do it by clicking on run as link at submenu, invoke on device. That action will launch the emulator with our widget. As you can see everything seems to work fine. We can see the input box with default value. After submitting the list of uh, items is displayed. We can test the pagination buttons or choose one of the items uh, reload or back home screen. And that will be all. Thank you for your attention.